In this video, we're going to be discussing what we mean by uh, correlation, uh, mathematical correlation, uh, what scatter plots are, and what we mean by a best fit line. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about the concept of correlation. Okay, now correlation, whenever you hear the word correlation, you might as well think of this word as connection. Okay, uh, often, of course, in algebra, we talk about two variables being related in a relation, uh, x and y, but those are very, very general, general terms. So let's go, go ahead and use like different, different terms maybe. Maybe these variables represent different quantities. So uh, for example, let's say number, number of hours uh, studied okay, on, a, on an exam. What we'll do is we'll refer to number of hours studied on an exam as kind of like being our x value. And we say uh, number of percentage points, uh, points, percent, you know, points earned. Okay, like uh, this is very, very truncated but earned, okay? Uh, the fact of the matter is this, we can call this Y. Um, we could look at it this way, we could say, the number of hours I study for an exam, okay, definitely has a connection to what kind of score I get on that exam. And, you know, we can just kind of talk about this, the more I study, of course, probably the better I do. Uh, and one important thing to notice here is this, there is no set rule that says, hey, every time I study an hour, I'm gonna get like 5% better on my test. However, there is a connection between these two things. And when we say connection, of course, remember we mean there's a correlation between these two things. Okay, so this would be, this would be one example. <clears throat> We're going to do another example. So how about, um, how about we say this? <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez, I'm sorry. Leg length. Leg length. If you're a student, okay, and you have to run the mile in PE, you know that the short people kind of, they get the shaft on this one because shorter people probably take some longer to run the mile because of the leg length. So we say leg length. And we could even say in like centimeters, we want to be clear on what we're measuring in. We'll call this like our X, uh, and then we'll call this mile time. The time it takes me to run the mile. And we'll measure this in minutes. And, and not that we need to be specific on this case, but we'll call this Y. Okay, so this would be another example of, of uh, like somebody's leg length and their mile time. Now again, I really want to stress the fact that just because my leg length, maybe it goes up by a centimeter every time, we can look at, you know, one person has, you know, their leg length is like 38 centimeters, and then you go to the next person is 39, and the next person is 40 maybe. That doesn't mean that every time the leg length goes up, that the mile time changes by the same amount. However, we can definitely see that there's a connection between these two quantities, these two you know, values that are being related to one another. And in, in the first case, let's just go and talk about the first case again. Uh, if you consider the number of hours we study, and we can kind of illustrate this here, we'll draw, we'll draw like an example of the first case here. We could put the number of hours that we study, we say that's the independent variable. I mean, that can change, uh, however, but we say study hours. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abbreviate here, study and score. And then we'll kind of sketch out what it might look like if we looked at the second example, which was necessarily leg length. So length of our legs and time in the mile. Okay, time. Uh, what you would see is this. We could actually ask a bunch of people to tell us how many hours they studied and then record their scores on a test. That is, look, I mean, if, if we said one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours here, uh, we might have two different people that studied one hour, but one of them say if this is like 50% and this is like 100%. One of them that studied an hour may get like somewhere in the 70s, which would be about right here. Uh, and then another one might have gotten a lower score. It just that's the way things are. But we could collect the data from everybody and what you start to see is this. They'd say, okay, so give me your time, you know, uh, one and a half hours. I studied one and a half hours and I got, and I recorded this score. And, and, you know, I studied two hours and I recorded this score. And another person studied two hours and they got this, okay. And, and maybe, and what you start to see after a while is this. The more we study, you know, we can collect scores from all sorts of different people. And this is just, I'm pulling this right out of my, my head here. And of course, we're like, that's, that's got to be 100, okay. So just, my graph isn't perfect. But what you see is this. As the number of hours studied increases, or as x increases, if y also tends to increase, okay, we're going to refer to this as a positive, positive correlation, okay? So in other words, as x goes up, if y also tends to increase over, over x, then we say it's a positive correlation. Whereas now we say, look at the second example, and okay, this was a positive correlation positive connection between these two things. A positive correlation just means, and you could also look at it this way. We're going to be drawing some best fit lines here in a minute. 
Uh, and by the way, these are called scatter plots. You'll never guess why, because I have a scattering of, of plot endpoints. Um, we're going to make one here. Uh, but, but let's take a look at, say, leg length and time in my mile. Now, if I have really, really short legs, okay, and, and so we probably don't have anybody of leg length zero. So what we can do is we can draw this little squiggly here and say maybe jump up to a leg length of 30 centimeters. That is, we're not going to measure anybody that has less than 30 centimeter legs or something like that. Or, you know what, that's, that's kind of ridiculous. And less than maybe 20 centimeter legs uh, in this instance. But we could take a look at their mile time. And let's say, okay, so, so what you start to notice is this. As their legs get longer and longer, the time it takes these people to run the mile is necessarily like going down, okay? So we get this nice scattering of data plots that we can collect the data on. And what you see is, as X is getting bigger and bigger in this case, Y is actually decreasing, okay? It tends to decrease, not exactly, but tends to. So we would refer to any instance in which, you know, and, and I'll write this out here, correlation. A positive correlation we said as, as X goes up, Y also tends to, to increase, whereas negative correlation is X goes down, Y tends to decrease. And that's just what we mean by positive negative correlation. Uh, I did mention we're going to be making uh, lines of best fit, so, so let's go ahead and start talking about those, shall we? Now, the fact of the matter is, the data, the data that we're looking at here may tend to increase over, I don't want to say time, but as X increases, Y increases. We call this a positive correlation, whereas if X increases, Y tends to decrease. We call this a negative correlation, okay? Um, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't proceed in, in like a precise fashion. Again, we said as X goes up by a certain amount, Y doesn't necessarily go up or down by a certain amount. However, what we could do is we could use this pattern or this trend, okay, this trend to actually look outside the data set. That is, on our first graph here, we stopped at a, at a study of five hours. So that was the time, okay? We could actually say, well, what would happen if we went out to seven? Now, we didn't collect data on seven hours. However, we could say this. If this pattern were to continue, then what we could do is we could say it'd probably be somewhere up here or something like that. Now, an important thing to note is this. In our first example, there's no way you could get over 100%. So when we talk about, you know, extrapolating or going beyond the data, we also tend to need to think that there are certain points at which we could not go further than. So let's take a look at this first one. We're going to draw what we call a line of best fit, a best fit line. And the purpose of this best fit line is simply to say the data is kind of basically doing this. So on the first set of data, I tend to get this from students. I say draw a line through the data, just, just any line through the data that you think basically describes what's going on here. And I get a lot of kids that like to highlight the first data point and the last data point and connect the dots. Now, they'd say, okay, so this line is my best fit line. It fits my data. Does it fit it very well? I would actually go so far as to say, no, not necessarily. You'll notice that there were a lot of points on top of our best fit line here. And what we wanna try to do essentially is draw a line through the data that splits all the points above and below the line. Now you might say, okay, well that one, you know, kind of splits it that way, but that doesn't really tell me what's going on with my data. So best fit line is my favorite thing. You just get a straight edge and you just kind of draw a line through the data. And you say, hey, this line is my best fit line. It describes the trend. It describes, describes the trend. That's it, that's it. That's what we mean by best fit line, okay? We'll go into why we draw those later on, but, but over here, my negative correlation, I can say, well, the best fit line would be somewhere through my data, probably like right there. And you know, I'm just, that's just a rough guess. Um, and you gotta understand I'm drawing this with a bamboo tablet here. It's not very easy to do, but we say, this is my trend line or, or best fit line. It best fits my data. It just serves to tell my audience, basically, this is what's going on. And the reason why we draw these is because, well, hey, if I went beyond the data, my last data point stopped here. Okay? If I were to keep going, I know it continues on probably in this pattern, I could get a good idea of where it would be. Okay? So that's the purpose of a best fit line. So let's say we had a set of data, and, and we can actually graph this set of data, and we're going to flip over to GeoGebra here in a second, but what if we said x, y, and maybe we had like uh, 1, 2, and 1, 3, and, and like uh, maybe 3, 3, 3, 4, why not, 5, 4, 
by five. I'm just kind of making this stuff up here. Six, seven, how about seven, six, seven, six, um, eight, eight, yeah, nine. Oh, I won't go back down. Uh, before we go ahead and flip over to GeoGebra and actually graph these data points in our scatter plot, okay, we'll make a scatter plot of this data. I want you to notice this. As X is tending to increase, okay, so it's getting, it's getting bigger and bigger, look at your Y values. You're noticing that they tend to increase as well. So if I were to ask, okay, so what kind of correlation is this? We know that positive correlations are correlations in which as X increases, Y also tends to increase. Okay, so we can actually graph these points now. Uh, let's see if I can, I, I do have a list in front of me here. So we had 1, 1, we had 1, 1, uh, 2, comma, 3, over 2, up 3, uh, 3, 3, we had 3, 4, 3, 4, uh, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 5 was one of our points, 6, 7, and 7, 6, so we say 6, comma, 7, 7, comma, 6, we had one go down there, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, and 9, 7, 9, 7, okay, so taking a look at our data points here, you can see that as x is increasing, y tends to, to increase also. And our, our goal was to make a best fit line for this data. So I'm just going to make a random line here. Uh, and I'd say, okay, so this would maybe, this line right here would maybe describe the data. Just again, I want to reiterate this, like maybe, maybe this line right here would not be the best line, even though we had lots of dots on top and lots of dots on the bottom, because that doesn't really kind of describe how these were increasing. So when I say make a best fit line, I really, really, you guys, I just want you to know that you're just kind of trying to get your line through the data such that it kind of looks like that describes what's going on. I would say a best fit line for this data set might be something like that. That was a very good best fit line. And again, what I want to point out is this, if you can see my cursor here, um, if the data were to continue, and we say points K and L are on my line, they're not in my data set. If the data were to continue, say we go out to 10, we can actually use this line to say, well, if the line approximates what's going on, then if we were to go out to 10, then it would pop up and hit my line right about here, which allows us to kind of look at if the pattern were to continue, where would it be in the future? And that's the beautiful thing about using best fit lines. We can actually come up with an equation for it, plug in an X value that wasn't in the original data set, and then come up with a Y value that would be a really good guess as to where my data set would have been if we continued. So this will continue on in my next video where we'll actually come up with an equation of a best fit line and then, uh, and then use that to predict future values, what we call extrapolation.